Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Chainsaw Reacts Podcast, episode number 38. And today guys, we are covering two topics. And those topics in order are, number one, the X-Men Apocalypse official trailer breakdown. I'm going to go through the trailer from start to finish. If you see a screenshot from the trailer on screen, I'm talking about that particular moment from the trailer and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to skip around in this topic and look for different pictures that I might be covering in this uh, thing, I'm going to cover the biggest moments from the trailer that you can hear me talk about those particular moments and all that kind of stuff. Kind of stuff just break it down give my thoughts and opinions and all that kind of stuff and there's that that that'll be the first topic will be the majority of the podcast is this breakdown the second topic will be is Apocalypse going to die in this movie? I know it's a big leap. We have only seen one trailer, obviously, but I, I'm asking the question, are they going to kill off Apocalypse in this movie? So we're going to get into that as the second topic, obviously relating it to the trailer and all that kind of stuff and the movie. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the first topic, which is obviously the X-Men Apocalypse trailer breakdown. Now, first things first, you see here is young Jean Grey, obviously, in a panic. She's scared. She's freaking out. Because what is first shown is a bunch of random images, and all of a sudden it turns into destruction. Everything's blowing up, and then you see Jean Grey freaking out. Now, what I like about this is that it is hinting at that Apocalypse is obviously back for destruction, and Jean Grey is the first person to kind of sense this with her powers and her abilities. And so, to me, that was a very nice way to kind of start this off because they could have easily just started off with the voiceover of Apocalypse and all this kind of stuff, and that was how they were going to build the trailer, kind of like what they did with Avengers Age of Ultron's first trailer, the first teaser, with James Spader voicing over saying, I'm going to show you something beautiful. They could have went that route with Apocalypse, but instead they show that this character that we've been, that we've known for a long time, Jean Grey, senses this destruction and this coming of the apocalypse, essentially, and that's how it kind of gets introduced in the trailer. Now, whether that's going to be the introduction into the movie, it would make sense that Jean Grey would sense it, but then you would think that maybe Charles Xavier, Professor X, would actually sense the same thing, too, but as it's shown a little bit in this next shot here from... Uh, Professor X, with that style and hair, <laughs> that he says it's just a dream. You know, he to me that that's that say that's saying that he doesn't feel what she's feeling. He doesn't sense the destruction coming. That she's the only one sensing it essentially, and he has no effect whatsoever. At least at this point in the trailer, or at least in the film, he doesn't you know see what's coming essentially. So it's kind of interesting how she senses it, yet Professor X can't feel it. So that was kind of interesting on that point there. The next shot we're going to talk about is obviously the hooded apocalypse with a young storm. And I think at this point, she's probably trying to fight his control, maybe, and that's why he's trying to, you know, like go to her and trying to, you know, keep her at his grip because as we explain a little bit later with the four horsemen, he needs the four horsemen of the apocalypse. He needs four mutants under his control or four beings under his control when he rises and comes back essentially. So I have a feeling at this point she's trying to fight his control, but at this point we're not really sure. But it's a nice shot to see, and it goes by pretty fast. So seeing these breakdowns, stuff like that, really does help notice the small details, but that's my subject getting from this trailer. It's kind of interesting how he keeps himself hooded, I'm guessing, to kind of keep that mystery, that mystery going, essentially. The next shot real fast I want to talk about real fast is Apocalypse. He is back to the camera. You see Storm there. You see another character there. And from the particular breakdown I'm looking at, this character is called Caliban. I'm not exactly sure what that character is, but I'm assuming it's a mutant that maybe helps out Apocalypse along the way or helps Apocalypse find his other four, his other uh, four horsemen or whatever to br to make the actual four horsemen. So we'll see how that uh, goes over with that. Now next up, we're gonna go through this pretty fast, but we have the two returning characters from First Class. They're finally coming back. We have uh, obviously Havoc, and we also have um, Ro uh, as Mora 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 Mac Target uh, Mora. Anyways, Mora and uh, and then Havoc as well is returning. I'm not sure in what type of roles they're going to be having in this film. I'm assuming Havoc is going to have a bigger role than she does, but then she might become a love interest for Charles, so we'll see how that goes over in this movie. But I have a feeling Havoc is returning, obviously, because they need as many mutants as possible to take on this force. So that'd be kind of cool to see how they handle that. But it's nice to see both these characters are returning to this. The next shot is going to be this pyramid shot, and it looks like this was maybe a flashback to when Apocalypse was 
possibly in power back in the Egyptian times, essentially. So I like that they're that if this is what they're doing, then they're going to go flash back to this moment. Then it's going to show how Apocalypse has been reigning uh, as a leader for a long time. So I'm hoping that's what this is. I'm hoping that's what they're trying to hint at is that this is a flashback scene to his origin or maybe to when he was reigning way back then and all this kind of stuff. And so maybe we get a little bit of hint of all that. Now, the next shot, a restricted view. They're, they're trying to hide Apocalypse a little bit in the beginning of this trailer. Now, my assumption to why this is, is because originally when they showed this trailer at Comic-Con and they showed some pictures from EW Entertainment Weekly Magazine, there was a lot of criticism and all that kind of stuff for Apocalypse's look. And for me personally, I didn't hate the look. I just wish it would look a little bit more like the actual look of the character in the comics and in the 90s uh, X-Men cartoons. But I think that for the trailer's sake, they're trying to hold them off a little bit because, I mean, it is the X-Men's most feared foe. I mean, he is the biggest villain of the X-Men universe. So I like the feeling that they're doing this, but I mean, I wish that they didn't release the EW photos and all that kind of stuff. Um, before the trailer actually was released, because then maybe it's a little more, it, it would be, it would feel more mysterious if this was, if this was uh, our first official look at the kind of design, and we we're going to see his face a little bit later in the trailer. But since we've already seen him in those photos, and people have criticized it, that now it's not really a huge hint to what you know what they're trying to pull off here. So we have a couple other shots here. I want to talk about two in particular ones. We have Young Nightcrawler. So a lot of people have been criticizing his hairstyle, but then again, look, we're in the 80s, people. This is not modern times. This is the, this is a Young Nightcrawler. Obviously, we got introduced to Nightcrawler originally in X-Men 2, but this is obviously the younger version of that X-Men character. And obviously, the timeline has changed, so things are going to be different, obviously, from what originally happened leading up to the original three films. So there's probably going to be completely different, but... Seeing young Nightcrawler is pretty cool. I'm interested to see how they handle the young Nightcrawler character and what type of involvement he's going to have in this film. Since he's officially being re he's being he's being reintroduced in a sense uh, after being absent for a very long time. Next up, we have a shot of Jubilee. Now, this is the first time they've actually officially put Jubilee in a, the actual film itself. There's been a couple times where they've tried to sneak in Jubilee and they've tried to put her in the film and there's been like deleted scenes or she was she was featured smallly in X-Men 2 but it wasn't like a thing to where oh my god that's the actress that's that that's Jubilee that's just they just said Jubilee and that was it. They've tried so hard to put Jubilee in these movies. They even tried to put her in X-Men Days Future Past in the actual future timeline with the original X-Men cast and that just didn't work out obviously so I'm glad that Brian Singer is putting her in the film uh, I just don't know what type of role, I, but what I've been reading is that she does not have a big role in this film. But it's interesting that they're introducing her in this film with the massive, uh, with the massive apocalypse. So next up we're going to go to is Magneto. This is pretty interesting. Obviously, I think at this point he is um, probably under the control and he's trying to fight it. It looks like he's very distraught. He's very disturbed. Uh, he's just not happy. Not a happy Magneto at all, and I don't blame him because, I mean, I wouldn't want to be him at this point because, I mean, it looks pretty brutal what's happening to him. I mean, being controlled by Apocalypse is probably not a fun thing. It probably takes a toll on him once in a while, but uh, I'm wondering if he's able to actually fight it. I'm not really sure. But if if he's not being controlled at this point because the next shot we do see Apocalypse walking towards um walking towards him, so I'm not really sure if he's actually under control or he's feeling that Apocalypse is trying to take control of his mind and he's trying to fight it at that point, but we'll see what happens, but um, but just seeing Magneto distraught like this is really disturbing and I'm really interested to see in the context of the film what's happening in this scene with him and Apocalypse, I'm assuming, is in the same scene, so we'll see what happens, but that shot that they showed of him like we're seeing right now is uh, pretty uh, pretty interesting nonetheless. Next shot, we're going to go pretty fast these, but we're going to get through them. We have Storm standing there, nice costume. She's obviously completely under control, I think, at this point. She's obviously uh, not a happy camper, but she is there in control. So, you know, I think that's a pretty good choice for Apocalypse to pick her on his side. Next up, we have Archangel there. Obviously, there's no shot of his wings, but it's kind of a close-up shot, and he's obviously under control, you can tell by his face. Uh, that he is obviously there to be the assistant, uh, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse for Apocalypse. Next up, we have Psylocke, and now this shot was kind of interesting because it's a little bit different than the other shots. She doesn't look look like she's in control, like she's under control. It looks like that 
she's trying to do something. I'm not really sure if this was put in as just, okay, it's a shot of Psylocke and we need that to kind of hint that she's one of the four horsemen, which she is. But it, it to me, it doesn't look like a shot that she's in control. Because look at the, the, if we, you know, if you look back at the first two with Archangel and Storm, they are in control. They are, I mean, they are being controlled by Apocalypse. In this particular shot, it doesn't look like that at all. It looks like that she's, you know, um, you know, being she's doing something else, and they just threw that in for you know whatever reason. Next up, of course, we have Magneto in the pretty cool outfit. I wish it was a full shot. We'll see a little bit better shot in a minute with uh, going through the breakdown, but it's pretty cool to see that uh, that as well. Just to see that costume, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty badass. So there is that. Next up, we have the shot, which goes by pretty fast, but I really enjoy it. And as you can see right now, it's pretty badass. Magneto is freaking there with Apocalypse, Storm, Archangel. And then I'm assuming Psylocke is behind Magneto, and you can't see him in the shot. But uh, as you can tell from the next shot here, he is pulling uh, Charles Xavier back uh, using his, obviously, uh, his abilities and... I'm wondering what happened to Charles. Is he knocked out? Is Was Apocalypse trying to get inside his mind or something like that? But he's obviously not um, all there with that shot right there. So I'm pretty interested to see how that goes down in the X Mansion. Next shot we have, which I think is pretty interesting, is the actual in the X... Uh, is it called the X-Wing? The... the uh, in the X-Jet, excuse me, I'm, re I'm reading through here, the X-Jet. So as you can see, we see Beast, we see Quicksilver, we see Cyclops, we see, obviously, Mystique, we see Moria, we see uh, Jean Grey, all in these black outfits that remind me of the original X-Men franchise uh, outfits, especially the outfits that the X-Men and the, the original uh, cast of X-Men wore in, in the Days of Future Past. The black outfits and all that kind of stuff, there's some, some pretty cool designs. So I like the fact that they had... Th that they're in those type of outfits because it's it kind of throw it, it's kind of reminiscent to what they're going to be wearing in the future. Not really sure about Mystique, but you get my point. So uh, a lot of people have been criticizing the outfits in the the black suits or whatever the outfits. And for me, I'm fine with them because they've kind of stuck with that pattern for a long time. There's only a few particular you know um, mutants and X Men that get unique outfits because. You know, uh, they try to make them stand out like Magneto, and obviously Apocalypse looks completely different. Uh, Charles Xavier didn't didn't wear an outfit or a suit, and or, you know, like an actual like cost like a suit essentially, like they are in this picture until Days of Future Past, and from Patrick Stewart. So um, I'm just interested to see how this is all pulled off. If maybe that if they continue to make these films with these X Men actors and stuff into the future, if their costumes are going to go to the actual classic comic book look. Or kind of stick with this black, because so far they've stuck with this black, and I'm personally fine with it because we have the comics, we have the cartoons, we can always look at that for uh, something else. Next shot we have is obviously the X, the uh, black suits again, but it's a cooler shot of of uh, Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Nightcrawler. Obviously, all the younger versions, obviously, and uh, I'm liking the look. I'm liking this kind of scene here. Obviously, there's a lot of destruction around them. They obviously do not look like they're in their right element. Cause like, what did I sign up for? I just I decided to join the X Men, and now I'm here fighting Apocalypse. Um, you see, obviously, Nightcrawler in the back with that hair. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice. That hair. At the, at some point, we gotta just get over that hair, people. Um. I'm not really sure how I'm feeling about young Cyclops and young Jean Grey, to be perfectly honest with you, because I'll be honest and up front, guys. Uh, I am a huge X-Men original cast person. I love the original cast. The original cast of Famke Janssen as Jean Grey, James Marsden as Cyclops, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm a huge fan of Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, them, that cast, Holly Berry, Storm, all of them being... Those are my X-Men. This is the new X-Men. This is the same characters, just the younger actors playing them. Me personally, guys, it, they have to grow on me because I'm so used to the original cast. When they brought them back in X-Men Days of Future Past, I love it to death. I'm obviously going to give the new cast, you know, obviously Cyclops and Nightcrawler and Jean Grey here a shot. But that that my whole childhood growing up was the X-Men 90s cartoons and the original X-Men films. So it's going to be interesting to see how they pull this off. I'm really interested to see these younger uh, actors playing the characters that I love so much from the movies and all that kind of stuff and seeing how they portray them now with, uh, you know, portraying them in a younger version and basically portraying them in a different way because they're in a humongous war with Apocalypse. So I'm really interested to see how 
they deliver on that front because this is not going to be easy, I don't think, because, you know, they, they're, they're obviously acting with people who have played these characters for multiple films, so I'm excited to see how they handle it. I'm trying to get this thing to scroll down because it is taking forever for some stupid reason. Okay, so the next shot we have is Archangel. That shot, this shot is badass. Okay, I have to say, this shot is freaking badass. It goes by pretty fast. You got, I kept repeating it for a couple different times because it was a really cool shot of Archangel sh showing up. The wings look pretty awesome. I like it. Uh, obviously, they'll fix it up a little bit later. Look, make it look a lot better in the actual film itself. So I, I got to give a little uh, bit of uh, you know time for that because that is a pretty epic looking picture. Next up, we have Storm coming out of, like, a lightning strike, so that was pretty cool. She's obviously pissed. Maybe, maybe at this point, she's not controlled by Apocalypse, but I'm not really sure. But uh, just to seeing the lightning strike come down, and she's standing there, uh, like, from the lightning strike, and she just teleports down there from the lightning strike, I gotta give that. That's pretty badass. Can't, you know, can't, uh, can't complain. Next up, we have um, Magneto, and he looks uh, pretty pissed. I mean, that face. That face, though, right? <laughs> he does not look happy in that picture. He's got a bunch of metal. It looks like from like a plane or from a car or something. And then obviously in the next, and obviously if you keep on going from the trailer, he slams it down with his powers. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here, but obviously he's not, he's not in a very good mood at all. Not in a very good mood at all. Next up we have Apocalypse. An upper front shot. I mean, he looks pretty uh, crazy in this shot here. I mean... He is obviously controlling the weather. He's trying to do something. He's giving a monologue, essentially. But I'm just like, oh my god, it's freaking Apocalypse. And he is, you know, he's going to bring destruction. And the next shot you'll see uh, here is that there is these standing mutants. I'm assuming they're mutants or people. And he's like, they're flying past him. And I'm wondering what's happening here. Now, the breakdown goes into saying, is this Apocalypse's Cerebro? That's pretty interesting theory. It might be. It might. It kind of makes sense that since he can control mutants, that possibly he can look into the minds of all these mutants and, you know, maybe not, maybe not control them, but kind of sense them in some way. Maybe that's the point of this shot here. The next shot, I mean... God, there is so much destruction going on in here. And I'm wondering to myself, how are they going to defeat him? Look at this. This is insanity. Look what's happening to the bridge. Look what's happening in the actual city itself. My God, it's going crazy right now. I am like, they are really going all out with the destruction. I mean, they're really pushing the whole apocalypse is going to destroy everything. So, like I said, I don't know how they're going to defeat him, if they even do, which will be the second topic. But there you have that. The next shot we're going to have is the black eyes. This is very interesting. So I think at this point, uh, Charles is sensing Apocalypse's presence. Maybe this is for the first time. Maybe this is after he's already encountered Apocalypse and he's trying to get into his mind to see what exactly is happening. But as you can tell with the black eyes, not very smart. Not very smart at all. But it is happening. And he says, I've never felt, I've never felt power like this. And that's really a powerful, um, a powerful line because... This is saying that this is above Charles Xavier. This is way above anything he's felt before, which means, obviously, Apocalypse is the most badass villain. He's the most powerful villain. So it makes sense this is, since this is happening, but it's very powerful to hear Charles Xavier feel that presence and to see the power is overcoming him to the point where everything's black. I mean, it's just crazy. I, I'm just, I'm really excited to see how this scene plays out, especially because, you know, what what exactly is going to happen here? I'm not really sure, but maybe this is the beginning of Apocalypse. Maybe this is the scene where Apocalypse and his four horsemen are in the X-Mansion in the hallway. And this is the scene, and this right here is happening right before they actually show up in the X-Mansion. And, and Magneto uses his powers to drag Charles Xavier back. Maybe that's what happens, maybe not. The last thing we're going to talk about is obviously Bald Xavier. Finally, James McAvoy is finally bald in the X Men, uh, in the X Men universe, officially, because originally in X Men First Class, James McAvoy, who portrays Charles Xavier, Professor X, shaved his head, thinking that they were going to be doing the shaved head look immediately, and no, they were not. Okay, maybe in Days Future Past, in the past timeline, nope, no, they're not. And so in this, he finally gets to don it. Now, whether or not he gets to do this uh, pretty early in the film or later in the film is um, is up in the air at this point. Who knows? But I do like the look, and I think he looks pretty good with it. And he reminds me of a young Patrick Stewart. 
But like I was saying before about how I love the X-Men original cast, I would rather prefer it to be Patrick Stewart. I would rather this movie be preferred. I would rather this movie be with the X-Men original cast, not the new cast. But that's just my that's just my little opinion there. There was one particular shot we didn't get to mention because I don't think that it was featured in this, and I do want to talk about it real fast. Uh, before we continue, because it's out of the loop, but I, I don't think that it was covered in this uh, this breakdown. Um, it's the shot of Apocalypse growing, and he's holding down somebody, uh, and I'm not really sure where uh, that is. I mean, I don't think I passed it. Maybe I did. Maybe I... Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. It says Charles versus Apocalypse, so apparently this is uh, happening... Um, Against Charles Xavier, maybe this is so. Maybe this makes sense. Okay, so maybe this is where, uh, maybe Charles is having a nightmare. Maybe he's having a dream. I'm not really sure, but just to see that Apocalypse is growing in in a dream or not a dream is just freaking awesome. I, I, I've been waiting to see this or hear about this or wondering if they're actually going to make Apocalypse grow. I mean, it makes sense because in the comics he grows into massive sizes and that's what he does to fight. So. I'm glad that they had this. I know that it's not obviously not at the end of the trailer, but you know it's it, it's just awesome. It's an awesome freaking shot, and I cannot wait for this movie. Even though I have my opinions about certain things, but you know at the end of the day, guys, it is a pretty cool trailer. I do like some of the shots, and I think that overall it's going to be a good movie. But I'm I'm ready to see more before you know uh, before I make my final decision of whether I think that Apocalypse looks amazing and all this kind of stuff and how they and how the characters are portrayed. So. There is that. Let me take a sip of the drink, guys, and we'll get to our second topic in the podcast, and we'll be done. Okay, so the second uh, part of this podcast, second topic, is going to be, will Apocalypse die in X-Men Apocalypse? Now, the reason why I bring this up is, obviously, Apocalypse is X-Men's most powerful villain. He has been an iconic villain for a long time. He is not easily destroyed. He obviously is been alive forever and the way they're hinting at it that apocalypse has been sleeping hibernating something and he comes back and he comes back to take on the x-men to cleanse the world and to build a new one essentially that's what he wants to do and he gets his four apocalypse he gets the four horsemen of the apocalypse and he's going to go on this crazy you know attack on the earth and so my question is are they going to keep apocalypse alive are they going to put him back into slumber are they going to actually try to kill him i'm wondering how they're going to try to kill him i'm assuming that's what they're going to try to do they're going to try to kill apocalypse my question is are they actually going to do it are they actually going to be able to kill apocalypse because in my personal opinion if you ask me personally should if killing apocalypse is it smart within one movie i say no it's not here's why if you kill apocalypse in this movie you're basically saying that the most powerful X-Men villain of all time is easily killable in one film. I don't believe that. I don't honestly see how that's going to be effective because if Apocalypse is so powerful and he's able to control mutants and get the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and can destroy an entire city as we're seeing what he's doing in the shot in the trailer, that makes me question, you know, that that makes me think that if, if they're able to kill Apocalypse, then nothing can stop the, the X-Men. Nothing can. No. Nothing can stop them. They can even destroy the most powerful villain, Apocalypse, the original mutant, all this kind of stuff. They're able to just destroy him. And I don't I don't want to see that. I don't want to see Apocalypse die or be defeated and, he, and obviously he cannot win because he's the most powerful villain. It has to take them longer than one film, especially with kids. They're kids in this movie. I just can't see kids killing Apocalypse in one movie. Or stopping him officially. I just can't see it happening. I think... I'm not saying they end this movie on a cliffhanger. I'm saying that Apocalypse escapes because he's realizing he's not, you know, going to win. And he just disappears in there and unable to find him. And he comes back later. Because I think if you kill Apocalypse in this movie, like I've been saying before, it, it would just seem that they're making him weak. Because kids are able to defeat Apocalypse. You know, my first original argument was that I personally think X-Men Apocalypse should be with the original cast. The older cast members who are experienced with their powers, you can introduce a couple different mutants if you want to, and all this kind of stuff, 
and the older cast who have been experienced on this kind of stuff, they can still have a hard time, but they are able to defeat him because they are experienced with their powers. They're more powerful than they were when they were younger. It would make a lot more sense. But in this context, children, ch like teens, young adults who are learning about their powers and not really experienced are able to defeat Apocalypse in one movie? No, I'm sorry. That just seems a little bit ridiculous to me personally, if you're asking my honest opinion. Because I don't want to sit here and say, oh my god, I can't, you know, they're going to defeat him. I don't want to think that way because I'm basically agreeing with these young whippersnappers can defeat Apocalypse. No, it's just, I don't believe that one bit. No, I'm not saying that the trailer doesn't look great, because it does. I like the look of the trailer. I like the trailer. I enjoy what I'm seeing. I'm hopeful that I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that these new actors who are being introduced in this movie playing younger versions of characters you've already seen before, and the, and the characters coming back, and the actors coming back who played the characters in the first two, in the first class, and Days of Future Past in the past timeline in the movie, you know, I have no issues with, you know, some of these younger actors performing as these characters, you know, because even though I'm a huge X-Men original cast fan, I'm okay with some of the new cast or some of the, you know, newer actors playing the younger version of these characters, but I just can't see a bunch of kids who are being introduced for the first time in this movie are able to take down Apocalypse. I just don't see it. Especially when he has four other mutants fighting for him. Especially when, you know, he is able to bring destruction to the world and all this kind of stuff. And he's been leader for a long time. He's been a god uh, for, for a long time. I just don't see how this is possible. I just don't see it. So my personal opinion, if you ask me what exactly you should do, Apocalypse escapes in X-Men Apocalypse. He doesn't die. You know, they could say it's a victory, but he doesn't die, okay? And he comes back when the and he comes back in a couple years when they do a, a film with the original X-Men cast. They bring the original X-Men cast back. They introduce a couple extra characters like Cable and some other characters that maybe time travel from the future into the past in, in order to, to officially stop Apocalypse from arising again in the future where Cable's alive and everything goes to shit. That would make a lot of sense. But... I have a feeling they won't do it. I have a feeling they're going to kill Apocalypse in this movie and say, wipe your hands clean. Okay, guys, we're done. Let's go on to the next villain. Ah, oh, it's going to be really annoying because it's it's taken them six movies, six X-Men movies, not counting Wolverine solo films or the upcoming Deadpool or Gambit. took them six X-Men movies to finally do Apocalypse. You can't just kill Apocalypse in one movie. I don't care if Oscar Isaac says after this movie he doesn't want to play Apocalypse again in another movie. Get another actor that kind of looks like him, or at least the makeup looks kind of like him. That's fine, whatever. I just want Apocalypse to just live longer than just one movie. They've let Magneto, even though Magneto is, he's not really a big, huge villain where he's hating on everything and he, he kills people and he's, you know, all this kind of stuff. But he, him and Charles Xavier obviously don't see eye to eye. So they've let him stay alive, and he's a pretty powerful mutant, but they could kill him if they wanted to. But Apocalypse, the first original mutant, no, I don't see it happening. It just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. Because he, they're, they're, they're building him up, with even within just, just looking at this trailer, not looking at the actual the comic book lore of the, the, of the character and looking at all this other type of stuff for learning about the character. It just wouldn't make sense personally to build up the hype for the most powerful mutant in existence in the X-Men universe, and then he dies in one movie. I just don't see it happening, guys. I really don't. I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts about this because it's just... Something's been rattling in my head for a long time because, you know, they're finally introducing Apocalypse. They're doing all this type of stuff. They're building the hype. They, break the, they brought the Four Horsemen in. They've introduced who the Four Horsemen is, all this kind of stuff. And so in order for me to fulfilly say that they've, they're, they're doing this character right by allowing him to live and not die in one movie just makes a lot of sense. He's not like every, he's not every other villain. He's not like every other villain. Yes, he's a villain in the he's similar to other villains sense of yeah that they wanted to destroy the world, they wanted to destroy the X Men. Yes, but this is completely different. This is an this is a mutant that is the original, the original first mutant, and this mutant can just d destroy everything. You can't stop him just with a couple of hits and stuff like that. It just doesn't work that way. I just can't see it happening that way, guys. And if Apocalypse dies in X-Men Apocalypse... If they kill Apocalypse in X-Men Apocalypse, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. Because this is a character that just cannot die easily. 
and the only way I would accept it if they found a very interest interesting and very original way to kill Apocalypse and make it look like it's not easy to do. If they find an easy like loophole, like oh we can kill Apocalypse like this, and they do it and he dies, I'm gonna be very disappointed. I'm gonna be very disappointed in how they handle it because this character just cannot be killed by e by easy means. You know they have to really come up with a very interesting plot device in order for me to go okay that makes sense kill apocalypse that way okay if that's what you're going to do but i'm telling you they're not going to do that i just don't see them doing it i see them killing him in a very easy way or they just beat the crap out of him and then he just dies i just i'll be very disappointed let me know in the comment section below guys what you thought about this topic what do you think is going to happen do you think apocalypse is going to live or die let me know in the comment section below guys thank you guys for listening to my podcast episode number 38 check out past podcasts if you've not heard them thank you guys for watching my uh watching hearing listening to my re uh not reaction podcast damn it okay let me stop talking okay i'm done rambling peace